we are desperately needing you. Jesus, thank you that you have us where you need us, not where we want to go. Thank you, Jesus, that you remind us to serve. Holy Spirit, continue burning up the flesh. We love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, may we see that there's got to be something that gets, up off, gets us up off the couch. And it better not be gold. And it better be God. Lord, to value the things you value. You value people. The world values gold. Holy Spirit, get us out of that mindset and to be willing to risk our lives for the sake of others. Reputation, lives, anything for the sake to get more of you and more of what you value. Father, we need it. We don't know how to get from here to there, but only you can do it. Open your word, O oh Lord, that we may behold glorious things from your scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. Is God good? Yes. yes. All the time. And all the time? God is good. Um, sure. So... I'm going to be jumping around all over the place. This is more of a prophetic message. But it also deals with sort of what we went through, what we um, heard with Eric Ludy's asking the tough questions, gold or God. Um, I'll put a link on the sermon page so you guys can look for it. Um, and uh, what I shared from last week was when Leanne died, I touched heaven. You're not the same. You are not the same. So I understand what he's talking about. What, what we were listening to Ryan Brass, Pastor Ryan, uh, talking about, you know, when you come back from heaven, you know, if you've ever experienced it, you're not the same. You can't be. You know, it's asking a soldier who's been in frontline combat, He's never the same. It's almost of the same caliber. He's been to death. Um, and it's... Um, so the message that God has given me, and Esther's got something to share that goes along with it, it's called, a fire's coming on the land, are you ready? I will admit that when I share, when I preach, it's not like a typical pastor's sermon. They have three points, they have three things, and I don't do that. I just, sorry, this is what the Lord gives. So, I pray that when you guys hear what the Lord gives you're challenged I pray you guys don't go home and say wow that was that was a great message and then it goes in one ear and out the other God forbid because you will be responsible for these words on judgment day if they're truly of the Lord you will be responsible for what you are you have heard if they're of the flesh fine I'll bear the reproach However, it's like in the book of Ezekiel. Sing us a sweet, sensual song of the things of the Lord. God forbid that these are just sweet, sensual songs. That they're words that will impact you because they're the Lord's words, not mine. I, I've lost everything. I've got nothing to live for here outside of Jesus Christ. He is my life. And the message that God is saying is the fire is coming on the land. 
Are you willing? Not, not are you ready? Are you will? Excuse me. Not are you willing? Are you ready to stand in that fire? The Lord gave us with eighth of a tank. I had a blue shirt. Had a little fish, Jesus fish, big old toothy grin and eyes. And on the back it says, "God is good." You know, it's my favorite shirt. The kids used to throw up on it. I wore it to every birth. And it was my favorite shirt. I actually had to buy it again because I loved it so much. Actually, Leanne bought it. And I, it started getting some holes, and I was putting it away. And God said, uh-uh. You wear it, you throw it out. Well, I can't throw it out. Well, then you wear it. But don't hold on to anything. Mm-hmm. And then one day, as we were moving, I'll never forget. I said, God said, throw it out. Throw it out. I said, God, I love this shirt. I used it for everything. I mean, it was ripped. It was... And he said, there will be coming a time when people will take everything that they've loved, they've worked for, all the relationships they've had, everything they've held so dear. They'll take it, just throw it out. And they won't be ready. They will not be ready for it. Because stinking, their hearts have been here. How bad they have it here. If you're not ready for it, you will be in in torment here on earth. And it will feel like hell. And let me, forgive me for speaking such hard words, it won't be hell. It will feel like it. Because you were not ready, you were not prepared to stand in the fire. You were not prepared for the for the testing of your faith. God is busy wanting to make gold. And you said, no, I'd rather take the rocks. What? You want what you want? And it's gonna burn. No. Oh yeah, you'll get to heaven, but though it's by fire, wood haste double. First Corinthians. We will be tested. The testing of your faith produces endurance. When was the last time you said, thank you, Jesus, I get a chance to bless my husband? Knowing full well your husband is just not caring two squats about you. Mm. When was the last time you blessed your children, knowing full well your children are railing against you and saying, forget you, mom. Mom, I don't want to listen to you. When was the last time you said thank you, Jesus, for my child? Because I could actually not have a child. When was the last time you gave him thanks for that circumstance? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I get to be in this hospital bed because I get to spend time with you. When was the last time that happened to you? Thank you, Lord. I get to talk to this nurse. I get to talk to that doctor. When was the last time you got to clean up a mess? For the upteenth time, thank you, Jesus, I have a table, and I have a mess, and I have children who make it. Because you could live without tables, and you could live on a dirt floor, and you could live without children. You're not owed any of it. You're not owed any of it. And every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father with whom there's no shadow of turning. Do we see as God sees? He's a consuming fire. And if he's God sees, guess, get, uh, guess what? You're in his fire. You are becoming as he is. Romans 8, conformed to the image of his son. We don't want that. All we want to hear is all. Uh, God works all things together for good. Yeah, sounds great, but we forget Romans 8, 29. We love 8, 28, but we don't listen to 8, 29. Being conformed to the image of his son. Guess what, folks? You'll get crucified. You'll get mocked. You'll get laughed at. You'll get jeered at. And it's thankless. Don't expect a thank you. Well, where's your thank you? Sorry. Stop hoping for it. You should do it. Not because... Someone needs to say thank you. You do it because God says, you are my beloved son with you. I'm well pleased. Why? Because he made you. That should be thanks enough. 
You should be thankful he made you, gave you life, gave you breath. Jeremiah 2, verse 19. Jeremiah 2. Do you need a Bible? Do you need a Bible? Uh, Hannah? No. Diane? Okay. Right here. Okay, good. If you don't have one, we'll get you one. Jeremiah 2, verse 19. Who in here believes you're treated as sons and daughters of God? Mm. And we say it, do we know it? Mm. The world says when you get something physical on you, it's punishment. Sorry, it's not, not necessarily. When you're a believer in Jesus Christ, where's the punishment? Oh, yeah. What was that reference again? Jeremiah, uh, Jer Jeremiah 2.19. Okay. 1 John says fear has, to, uh, fear has to do with judgment or punishment. There's no more punishment. It's paid for. How do we know it's paid for? Jesus says it is finished. The word there is tetelestai, meaning it's paid for. Punishment's over. There's no punishment to those who are in Jesus. If you're not in Jesus today, if you're not in Jesus, you need to, say, you need to tell him, Lord Jesus, I need your power in me. I need your life. I need your love. And I don't have it. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I want to be in the household. Look, this message is not to condemn. I know it's hard. This message is to stir you. To get you off complacency. The complacency of fools will destroy us. There's a shooting in St. Cloud. Dear brother and sister, it happened in their neighborhood. There's a drive-by shooting. Two uh, youth were seriously but stable. They're, they're hurt. She got shot. That could have been that could have been that. Police came to the house at first. He said, police. He looked out the window. He said, I got, I'm calling police now. I don't believe you. Rightfully so. There's no cars there. How does he know? That they're police. Thankfully, it was. Guys, we're not living in Mickey Mouse land. We're not living in Disney World. There's a sick world out there. It's not getting any better. Don't even kid yourself. Let me bring it closer. Your very homes are your first mission field. We're not living in Disney land. This is not Splash Mountain or Thunder Mountain here in your home. It's a small world after all. Sorry. It's a sinful world in your house. They need Jesus just as much as the world. Let's start there. Let's start in our own homes. Judgment begins first at the household of God, not at the world. Our lives are needing to be in order. Jeremiah 2 verse 19. Your own evil will discipline you. Your own apostasies will reprimand you. Why? Because of the flesh. You're holding on too much to the flesh. Look what's happening. And you're feeling like you're experiencing the curses of hell. Shows you what you're holding on to. Where's your mindset? Think it over and see how evil and bitter it is for you to abandon the Lord your God and to have no fear of me. This is, the, this is the declaration of the Lord, the God of hosts. Now, how does that apply to me, Erez? You want to know where your root of bitterness has been? Lord, take me back to those times. Honor your lives. If you don't have a copy of Steps to Freedom in Christ, that's one of the best resources. And I just pray the blood of Jesus right now over this conversation and meeting because the devil doesn't want you to hear this. Steps to freedom in Christ. Let me see if I have a copy of it. Let's like show the 
Never mind. I don't know if I do or not. Uh, okay, it's it's uh, it's today it's freedom in Christ, but it's a booklet, Steps to Freedom in Christ, that uh, uh, discipleship method that does really a full audit. It's a tool, no different than a hammer or a screw gun. Every tool is different. It's one that Leanne and I were using with counseling and whatnot. And uh, and ask the Lord. Have, have Him honor your life. Guys, stop running from your problems. You wonder where there's bitterness? Those are times you've abandoned the Lord your God. That's what He's saying. Think it over. See how bitter it is. For you to abandon the Lord your God and have no fear of me. The Lord showed this to me. You want to know when Hebrews says, have no root of bitterness spring up within you? Meribah, Meribah in Hebrew, fighting. Masah, testing, proving. Oh yeah, come on, come down from there. Yeah, prove it, God. That's, that's the kind of testing he's talking about. That's how that root of bitterness came in. Because in those moments, in the wilderness, they abandoned the Lord their God. Now you go before the Lord your God. Are you spending time, closet time, in prayer, in adoration, in intimacy? If you want that intimacy with your spouse, with your family, thank you. Steps to Freedom in Christ. If, if you don't have a copy, pick it up. Uh, I have a couple. I'll hand you a couple copies. Thank you, Jay. Think it over. Lord, why? am I not with you? You feel yourself empty? Go to Hebrews 11, 6, and I'll show you where you're empty. Again, this message is to stir all of us. I was guilty of self-pity today. A woe is me. That root of bitterness is a result of Make sure your, your finger's on that Jeremiah 2 passage, because that's very important. Hebrews 6. I, I'm sorry, 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We love that verse, don't we? We crochet it, put it on our walls. Yes, faith, faith, faith. Really, we forget this. For the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who do what? Seek him. Seek him. Are you seeking him? Or are you just in your closet reading your Bible? Check, I'm done. Are you seeking him? Or are you just wanting relationships with others? I'm going to tell you right now, you seek relationships with others, you will not get it with God. Period. Galatians 1.10. What's the verse you constantly share with me? Those was are compa- Galatians. Pardon? What was that last? That was Galatians 1.10. Okay. If you seek the approval of men, you don't have the approval of Jesus. You're, you, you are a slave of men. They that compare themselves among themselves. Is that the one you want? That's the one. They that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Second. Okay. Uh, Second Corinthians 10, 12, uh, 10, 12. For we do dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. I know I'm throwing out a lot of scriptures. You come here, get ready to get a lot of scripture. Okay? This has got to be your meat. You've got... Out of the mouths of infants and babes. One of the kids said, not living off of milk. We should be growing. 120 in the upper room turned the world upside down. And where are we? What are, I'm not saying go out and start doing stuff. I'm not saying that because that's putting the cart before the horse. What I am saying is seek the face of God. Stop the stupid relationships. Stop the foolish talk. We don't have time. 
We don't have time for trifles. Your lives are not your own. You're bought with blood, precious blood. Jesus, uh, what was it? Leanne used to say, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing where I go, or as I go, either one. What are you living for? Because the fire is coming, and your faith will be tested. What does Jesus say in the last days? If it were possible to deceive even the what? Elect? Folks, you're of the elect if, if, you, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Guess what? You are not immune to the testing. You're not immune to the temptation. Just because fire comes doesn't mean you're not going to get hot. Now it says in, I love this story. It's an excellent book, Vanya. A testimony of a soldier who was martyred. Uh, my dear friend from Ohio gave me a copy of that book. Ivan Moisevich. He was known as the Russian Moses. Martyred at the age of 19 or 21 by the KGB in the 70s, 60s, maybe 70s. Because he, for his faith. He was... In Russian winter, he uh, was told to stop praying, stop believing in God. And he said, I will not, I'm a Christian. He said, okay, you want to stand for, your, for, for Jesus? Get to be in summer uniform? And keep watch from two... I think it was midnight to two. Now there's summer clothes. This is Russian winter, snowing. One of the worst snowstorms they had at that time. Which means he was in shorts. He had boots on. He was outside. And he stood, watch. And the Russian soldiers, the commanding officers, so. Ivan, they're trying to warm themselves up. You going to stop this God business? And he's standing. No, sir. He's got shorts on, no coat. Probably just like me, maybe. I mean, but with shorts. He said, "Aren't you cold?" No, I'm actually warm. Moving his toes in his boots. Another hour, the major, the, the commanding officer comes. He says, Ivan, are you still not going to stop? No, sir. Get inside. Here's what he said. Tell me about this God of yours. Mm. He was martyred. He was martyred by the KGB. Because he refused to deny his faith. Guys, that was only 40 years ago, 50 years ago. It's not that far away. Young man. If you're not ready in the big things, excuse me, in the little things, forget it, you're not ready in the big things. Uh, so, going back to the bitterness issue, that will keep you from your intimacy with the Lord. Seek him and say, Lord, where are the bitter areas that I may repent? Psalm 139, search me, O God, know my heart. Try me and know my ways. See if there's any wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Well, Jeremiah 2, think it over. Well, is that what bitterness keeps you from? Intimacy with the Lord. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm keeping it around. No, it's fine. I, you know, it's, that's... That's how uh, fellowship should be, is we're family. And 
We got to. That's what discipleship is also. Bring people along the way instead of leave people in the dust because they can't, keep, they can't catch up. Ah, uh-uh. we're all in this together. All of us. My calling is to ensure that no one gets left behind. By the same token, the Lord says the same thing. No one's left behind. No one gets left behind. And he will stop at nothing. Even stripping your flesh. Consuming that which is dear to you. To get you the message. Lord, where have I been bitter? That I may repent. And he says this. Skip down to... What was that last reference again? Pardon? What was that last reference? Yeah. Which one about comparing themselves by themselves? I don't. Oh, there's so much, like I said. Uh, that one was 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Uh, okay. The bitterness... Bitterness was in... Was uh, in well, all throughout uh, Hebrews, it talks about a root of bitterness. Right. But seeking the face of God, Hebrews 11, 6. He will reward those who seek Him. Okay, I didn't get that. All right. So... Um, I think it was Galatians. Galatians 1.10 is being a slave of men because yeah. of their opinions. Okay, I didn't get that. that All right. not, okay, I'm, I'm good. Cool. Um, so go back to Jeremiah 2. And God is speaking this. Verse 27. Second part of it. 2.27. For they have turned their back to me, and not their face. What has God been seeking? Their face? What have we seen all throughout the scripture? God wants us to seek his face, not his hand. Instead, they've turned their back. Yet in their time of disaster, they beg, rise up and save us. But where are your gods you've made for yourself? Let me ask you some hard questions. What are the gods you, you've seen? Anything, what is a God? Is anything that is above this earth, an Elohim, a leader of, of divine nature, that is that has some sort of power or claim that perhaps can provide something of external benefit? Wood, humanity, stone, some sort of building or establishment. You trusting the government? So, can I say something, or should I, should um, I not? Stand by for a second. Because yeah. God is then saying, where are the gods you made for yourself? Let them rise up and save you. In your time of disaster, if they can, for your gods are as numerous as your cities. We have so much that we try to trust in. Look around you. Think and see. Lord, what have I trusted in? My affection? My kids? My spouse? My work, my retirement, the system that is out there in the world, Mm -hmm. like the food system, commerce. Folks, I've seen it when you're out in the wilderness. Lord, how are we going to get from here to there? And I've had people put money on my my, uh, driver's seat. My help comes from heaven and earth. Uh, My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, excuse me, Psalm 121. Uh, what, what was your question, Diane? It was, was more of a comment that that Jeremiah passage, especially through uh, 23, makes me think of America today. You know, it's not just America, it's us. We gotta, we gotta point the finger at us, individually in our hearts. There's, the Lord showed me, verse 35, but in spite of all these things, you claim I'm innocent. His anger is sure to turn away from me. I'm a Christian, I'm loved, I'm blessed. But I will certainly judge you because you have said I've not sinned. There's always room for improvement. First John. First John. Whoever says they have not sinned, the truth is not in them. 
boy is 36 convicting. How unstable you are, constantly changing your ways. Proverbs, who can say I have not sinned? There's no one. Guys, the word sin doesn't mean I'm going out and getting a prostitute. The word sin does not mean I'm going to go do drugs and shoot up. The word sin does not mean, it doesn't just mean, excuse me, doesn't just mean I'm going to go take my week's earnings and blow it all on hats and lotto tickets. The word sin means, man, I, I, I yelled at my child. The word sin means, but, but I mean, well, I mean, everybody does that. Yeah, and you're responsible for it. Like, you know, smack the child's butt out of anger or something. Okay, that's giving an example. Yeah, folks, it's sin. The fact that you were angry in that moment. And Jesus got angry. My house should be a house of prayer. That was angry. Okay. It says in your anger, do not sin. Like, you idiot child, and you smack him. That's sin. That's sin. Oh, I'm not getting what, you know. Why did they do this to me? Sin. You just, that's self-pity, right there in that five seconds, that's sin. Do you guys understand that? I'm not just talking about big things like huge life patterns. Yes, that's sin also. Do you guys understand you will be judged for your heart's motive? The fact that you are thinking of yourself, why isn't anybody listening to me? That's sin. You think your heart's not? That's sin. If you measure that by God's terms, your selfishness, cold-heartedness, he's not giving me what I need. I'm not finding a church where I'm fed. That's sin. You're focused on yourself. God says that's sin. Do I need to give more examples or do we get the point? I get the point. Thanks. <laughs> and if you measure by what God says, it's like, I'm undone. And God says, exactly. That's where you need the cross. That's where you need Jesus to say, Lord, I can't do this. And he says, exactly. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. But he said, Lord, I'm sorry. I was not kind to my child. And he says, it's all right. Let's do it better. That's where God comes in. All those moments, all those moments, Bring it to the cross, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys, the beauty, the good, this is where the gospel comes in. All those moments, oh, Eras, this is like huge. And you know what he says? You know what Jesus says? There's forgiveness. If you would just ask me, I bled for you, I died for you. Sin in Hebrew is chata'ah. I just got bow and arrows for the kids. Chata'a means you're aiming for the bullseye and it goes off course. It would be foolish to say, well, somebody kicked my leg or the wind's, the wind's fault. No. You didn't aim right. Judah, my one, he, he's been, he's like, Daddy, I can't seem to hit it. It's not good. I said, why don't you ask Jesus? Jesus, help me to hit the tree. And Judah said, the Lord told me, move a little over to the left, or to the right. I don't remember which direction. And he did. Boom! And he hit the tree. If you would just ask, it's right there. Esther, you, you, you were sharing. So let me finish up that thought. Uh, that fire that's coming, it's the testing of your faith to show you yeah, you think you were okay. Let me show you how you really are and how much you really need me. It's not a destruction for destruction's sake. It's to get you closer to Him. And when you are in Jesus, woo, all of hell can happen. And you are in that, in that protective hand of the Lord where because you have resigned yourself to Him, now there's nothing that can phase you. I don't know, sorry, the camera probably didn't catch me. 
but you're in that protective hand, and you can rest in that. But you have to get there first. You were gonna share. Honey. Are you done? Yeah, I, I think that was that was what I had. So, with what you were teaching on um, learning how to rest in Jesus, how to let Him be your all, um, on Monday we went to the DMV to do my driving test because coming to Minnesota, I had to renew my license again, driver's license. And I had gone previously and tried to do the test and I failed. This time we went, and the first time we prayed too, I, I guess I just I just failed. And then this time um, when we went, we, we both prayed before we went and I prayed for supernatural answers because some of the answer or some of the questions I never I was never faced with the question while driving in Ohio and I, I didn't know the answer. Um, so while I was taking the test, Eris was praying for me, I ended up having a 100% um, perfect score, which was, it was God, it was not me at all. Um, but while, what I really wanted to say, while I was at the DMV, I saw some people with masks on. Still, and in Minnesota, that mandate has been lifted. And you still see people with them on, and it's like, I, I felt that familiar um, stab of aggravation. It just aggravates me because I'm like, you guys are in so much fear of this whole thing. You're trying to protect yourself from something that you don't even know what you're protecting yourself about. And while I was in that aggravation, the Lord spoke to me. Um, he asked me, why, why are you aggravated? And he showed me how I am aggravated because in what, before I got married, I lost several jobs because I refused to wear a mask. And I, I just thought, God does not want me to wear one. And I don't, he didn't want me to. And I feel like I'm not going to succumb to this whole thing that doesn't make any sense. Um, there were other reasons too, but the other day the Lord told me, you are getting irritated because you just want to go back to normal. You want to go back to where it feels safe and comfortable. And there is no going back. We are moving forward and you'd better get ready for what's coming. And by getting ready is by moving on in with God, with, with our own personal relationships with God, so we can know how to rest and trust in Him when the fire gets turned up. So that was just like God can speak to you in such a short span of time, and yet when you go to write it down, it's like, whoa, He actually said all this. Um, and then a few days later, I was going on my morning walk, and I was rejoicing in the Lord. It was a beautiful day. I felt great, and and I had had this I had the spirit of joy. I had the joy of the Lord in me, and it all of a sudden it hit me that the joy that I feel that we feel here on this earth, Leanne looking down would think this is nothing because of what she has. And it kind of took it, it didn't take it away, but it, it made me long for heaven even more with that pace that I had, knowing there's so much more. And as I kept walking, there's a railroad track close by here um, that trains go, I don't know, three, four times even more a day. They're continuously going. We hear the whistle blowing, sometimes we see the train. Um, and as I saw it coming, I heard the whistle. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord, that life is good. Businesses are going. If businesses weren't going, the, the train, trains wouldn't go. You wouldn't see trucks on the road. And I was praising the Lord for that. And then it hit me, but what if they wouldn't? Some businesses are shutting down. What if everything was shut down? And 
And again, the Lord told me, it's not about seeing the trains or the trucks on the road. It's about trusting in me and moving in closer, getting to know the Lord better, knowing how to rest in Him when things around us aren't comfortable. And he took me to the verse in Matthew 21, verse uh, 44. In, in drawing us in, that's the verse that he gave me. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Mm. And if we're broken to pieces in that aspect, I think it's we are we will be comforted and healed by God. But on whoever it falls, it will shatter him. So that's, that's it, yeah. Go to Revelation 2. The Lord reminded me about this. I've got to give you this word. Um, this is very important because this, this goes with a fire coming on the land. Uh, this is the letter to Smyrna. Verse 8, or uh, right to the angel of the church of Smyrna. So, I'm not dealing with the prophetic, okay? The book of Revelation deals with... Uh, the book of Revelation is about the revelation, the fullness of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not about this, these, and that. Well, I'm not even going to get into that, okay? The scriptures are useful for training, correction, and reproof in righteousness. So that every man, woman of God will be completely furnished for every good work. Lacking nothing. This is a, this is a personal word that the Lord has given to give to y'all. And I, I pray you receive it. And there are so many different ways to look at it. And the Lord knows what these words are. The first and the last, the one who is dead and came to life, says, I know your affliction and poverty, yet you are rich. It's not a condemnation. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Here's the message for you all. Don't be afraid Amen. of what you're about to suffer. Look, the devil's about to throw some of you into prison to test you. And you will have affliction for 10 days. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Anyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The victor will never be harmed by the second death. There's one more, but I need to explain this. Um... <clears throat> Lord, guys, this may be martyrdom, this may be persecution. If you seek the face of God, time is of no essence. Okay? It could be, as Ezekiel, a wheel within a wheel, within a wheel, concentric circle sort of picture. So, the injunction is, don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. In your heart or on your body? In your pocketbook? In your belly? Okay, don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you. Guys, I'll be as sure as God made green little apples. It may be a physical prison. It may be a mental prison, okay? It may be an emotional prison. It may be a circumstantial prison. We've lived that, where you're in financial debt. God, how did I get in this? Is it 10 days? I don't know. Is it 10 years? I don't know. Is it 10 weeks? I don't know. But the, but the, the sense is, one, it's a testing, Two, it's a prison. Who puts you in prison? Do you put yourself in prison? I mean, outside of your own uh, breaking the law. 
The devil will, it specifically says the devil's about to throw some of you in prison. The devil will throw you into prison. That means who has to let you out? That's right. The Lord has to let you out. But it's to test you. And you will have affliction for 10. 10 means God's perfect order. 10 commandments, 10 fingers, 10 toes. Okay, the number 10 is very important. Days. Cycles of time. Essentially, the idea is short. 10 days. I'm not prophesying like, in, in, in 10 days, you will... No. The Lord knows you and the timing between you and Him. Okay? So I'm not even going to get into that. But it's a particular... The theme of it. The essence of it. It is God's perfect ordering of the shortness of the duration. And God's going to... Uh, excuse me. The devil's going to throw you in there. So you can be tested. That's the fire. You're going to be in a prison. You're going, you're going to be like, God, I can't seem to get out. What are you going to do? You're going to be like John Bunyan who was thrown in jail because he was preaching? What did he do? He said, he wrote Pilgrim's Progress. He said, this is a manuscript of little importance. It's a best-selling allegory. Yeah. Hmm. Second most translated book outside the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he praised the Lord. Okay? Now, the next word is this. Of, uh, where is it? In Philadelphia. Um, Seven. Down. Pergamum, thank you. Yep, Pergamum. Uh, Revelation 2, 13. I know, uh, uh, start 12. Right to the angel of the church of Pergamum, the one who has the sharp double-edged sword. The one who has the word of God says, I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. Guys, that can mean a physical place, Pergamum. And th that essence was where they had worshiping the emperor. Could be New York City, could be Minneapolis. But I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. So we live in these bodies. Guys, do you understand that Satan still has a foothold in these bodies? We're, we are purchased by the blood of Jesus. We are. I'm not denying that. The battleground is in, is in your soul. Okay? These bodies are wasting away. When I saw Leanne, literally just for six, I mean, for days, she did not eat. I saw, I was like, oh God, there's like, she was subjected to surgeries six times, eight times being put under. Medication after medication after medication. I'm like, dear God. And he reminded me, I'm allowing the devil to have his way so I can have her. Her body was handed over to Satan so that her soul look, what happens here on this earth now, I, she's saved, okay, I'm not speaking negatively, let, let me let me get, this this thing is corrupted, this, this thing is gonna go on the ground, okay, it's dust it's useless it is a vessel, it is a clay pot her, she's in glory but it was like what happened with Jesus, he was handed over to wicked sinful men they had their hour of darkness. That was the word that God gave me. I'm giving... I, it is their hour of darkness so that I can have my glory. And he says this, And you are holding on to my name and did not deny your faith in me even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan lives. Guys, do not deny the name of Jesus. Do not deny the name of Jesus. I don't care how bad it hurts. If the only thing you can say is Jesus Christ, 
Yeshua the Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Don't deny that name. If you are in so much pain, if you are tempted to... I'm sorry, I'm going to say, say this. It's not rated G, okay? I'm going to let y'all know. For, for some of you who have addictions, if you're tempted to masturbate, watch pornography, shoot drugs, just go out and start cussing. Start being unkind. Say, I don't want to give. Where, where, where you're like, you know God is telling you to either quit your job, go be nice to that real nasty person at work. I don't want to. Say the very first name that saved you. Jesus, help me. I can't do this. Like Corey Tim Boom, where her, the officer wanted to shake her hand. And she's like, I'm not shaking his hand. He beat her sister. He gave his life to Christ. He asked forgiveness. She said quietly, no, Lord, I can't do this. You say the name of Jesus and watch him do the miracles in you. Father in heaven, I thank you that you are turning up the heat. I thank you that you are destroying our flesh so that your glory can be made known. Father, wherever I've spoken flesh, any misunderstandings, get rid of it. Watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus' name, amen.